Guess who's back in Soccer We Trust, YouTube fam? I'm back in my normal spot, which feels good. It feels like home, just like this show. And that's because of this amazing community that we have. So please hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. And let's get after it. We have U.S. men's national team players scoring and setting up goals all over the place. Yes. What is up, everyone? And welcome to Bob Gansler's favorite podcast in Soccer We Trust. I'm Hollywood Jimmy Conrad alongside Heath Chuck Wagon Pierce and Charlie Trashcan Davies. And I'm grateful for you two covering for me on the last show because I was, you know, a little busy. But the next day I got to see three Americans play in person. Well, one was just warming up. Shout out to Matt Turner. When I went to Arsenal Fulham at the Emirates, so it was good to see Anthony Robinson and Tim Ream play in person. And we can get more in depth on this game in a little bit. But I'm a little bit worried because rumors are swirling today that Fulham are in the market for a left pack. A left pack and a left back. Not good for Anthony, of course. Anyway, because we like to flex on this show, we're going to collectively flex right off the top to let you know that we've been nominated as a finalist for the best sports podcast. So if you voted for us before, then look out for an email because we need you to vote for us again so we can bring home some silverware. Also, if you've already voted or if you haven't, it doesn't matter because you can still support us in another way because we have merch now, baby. Let's go. So head over to store.cbssports.com and go grab some In Soccer We Trust t-shirts, mugs, hats, bags, water bottles, whatever you want. But make sure to use this podcast exclusive code SOCCER20 for 20% off of your order. Charlie, I'm coming to you first today because you have a nice, clean looking haircut. Is there ever a weekend where you're not talking, watching, thinking about the beautiful game? No. <laughs> there, there, it's just... This is not possible, but I will say um, it was a great weekend uh, in terms of how many players were balling. Um, I think we got to see a lot. Big match from from. Hey, Arsenal. Charlie, hold on, man. I know you're talking, but they're the funniest comment just came up, and I it, it just had it, it's <laughs> Charlie casting from the Beast's castle. You know the <laughs> candles and stuff, dude. That is. Christopher Walken usually hits with some really good stuff, but that's it one does. of the funniest I've it's seen. Got, it's got a Hogwarts with those, feel to with it. Those, those yeah, with the candles. floating candles, it's just, oh, God, sorry, Charlie. I mean, no, I didn't, I didn't want you to Charlie, think that Charlie, I was laughing at your comments. Hey, you so, yeah, are you working down. with a new, you you with with a new interior designer the beast right now? is angry right now. He's yeah. in the other room. <laughs> is there, is there a, a new interior designer in your life? What's happening? No. Um, no, <laughs> just, just uh, stylish rooms. That's all. All right. All right. And no, Heath, how about you? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Finish, 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 Charlie, finish. Go, go it check, yeah. Sorry. No, um, you guys, you guys were right. It's the beast castle. Um, <laughs> but no, you, you tell me your your thoughts, Heath. Yeah, you always you always think and talk in the beautiful game. Yeah, Heath. Yeah, that's it's pretty much how it goes. Uh, interesting weekend again. Uh, fun fact for you guys, right? I just found ooh, this out ooh. that uh, Philadelphia Union has has scored more uh, six zero or six goal games in the last 10 games of the season than any team has in their franchise history. Damn. So in That's their last legit. 10 games, they've had more. They set the record of all franchises, and they did it in the last 10 games than any team in their entire history of Major League Soccer. Isn't that wild? Maybe they should just be our national team. They seem to clearly have it all figured out. <laughs> no, not young enough. Our whole national <laughs> team sitting on the bench over there. <laughs> That's but you true. Can, but it's, you can't argue it because they're winning all the time. All right. Let's uh let's get into some number nine time. That's what I want to call this right now because our strikers are doing some things around the world. And I'm going to start with some good news. And that was Ricardo Pepe started his first game of the season. Let's give it up for Ricardo Pepe. The bad news, he got subbed off after 55 minutes and he still hasn't scored a goal for a club or country since October. Augsburg suck, guys. I I'm just going to say, Jimmy, it. they Listen, suck. They suck. Well, he knew that going in, they were going to stay sucked. They okay. suck, and dude. He's never going to score there. I don't care. You could have put Charlie at his very, very best. Maybe Charlie will squeak one out there. But Charlie ain't scoring there either. I just, I, I honestly don't think that Ricardo Pepe is going to get called into the September camp. I, I don't think he's going to. Not. I'm not talking World Cup. I'm just talking about the September camp. And apparently well, how, that roster is dropping on September 14th. The World Cup. Jimmy, if he doesn't I, get called into this camp. He's not going to the World what? Cup. I'm, so he's not going to the World Cup. He's not going to this camp. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And I, I think it's due to the emergence of other players playing well. <laughs> Jeez. Jimmy, hey, hey, clip that one, huh? Throw that one hey, on the no. internet. No, he's not going to the World Cup. I don't hey. think he's going. Jeez. Because what are you going to do? You're going to – you gonna, what, you, what, Why waste a roster spot on him when when you got Haji Wright and P. Falk and Sargent and Brandon Vasquez? I'd rather see Brandon Vasquez at this point. Mm -hmm. Just just throw him into camp, see what happens. But at least Ricardo Pepe has shown that he can play at the national team level. Like he has shown that when he's I in. agree. He's got I, guys listen, who I, haven't still... who, who weren't playing and also were showing that they weren't 
at the the quality of the national team. There well, is that, something there. See this, but this is that that double jeopardy, that standard, right? Mm-hmm. Of yes, he's done it with the national team. We know what he's capable of. However, form dipped. He's not playing. So it's been almost how twelve can months you since justify, he scored. I was gonna say, how can you justify almost calling twelve months? A player up? And you you both have played on teams where coaches have said, "Hey." The standard to play on my team is training. You have to train at the best. That's who's gonna gonna be dictating the uh, the starting eleven is is the training results. And all of a sudden, you got that player who just doesn't care, could care less about training, misses training, gets his massages, takes his time. But sure enough, every weekend he's in the starting eleven. Right? There's a balance. And I always said to myself, if I'm if I'm ever a manager. I am going to stick to one thing and one thing only. If I'm going to say training matters, then training is going to matter for every single player, regardless of how many goals you've scored, you know, how many awards you have. Training is training. So in this case, is, I, is it about some players context, who are playing? Who are, you, who are you referencing here? I feel like you're not naming names. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. I'm just it, – this is a general – philosophy i, he, I think coaches. charlie's holding on to something like there was some guy that started over to, him who didn't Charlie. train yeah tell us no, 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 no. not at all I, 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 tell, I, I, tell, I, tell I, me that's not been the case for I, both of you though for for context though I, 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 I will never forget this line that pablo mastroni told to me once he was talking i think it was pablo and he was talking about precky and precky had said to him you know in 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 his in precky's voice of like monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday pablo you're the best one in training and saturday you hop on my back <laughs> and it was like it, it was like a, a context of like you train hard this whole week, but when match day comes, who's the one everybody needs to to deliver? And I remember thinking about that in the context of like you have teammates, you know, you have some that are that are assholes, you have some that train hard, you have, and you got to put a whole team together, and not everybody is the same, and there are some that are above the law at times uh, in terms of not having to be. Bob Bradley was very much like if you don't play, you don't come in, but that right. that rule got bent quite a few times. It's by, interesting, by, but, but I guess it would go by club at that standard, right? Yeah. If if you're at Chelsea, you're at Real Madrid, you're at Arsenal, you're at Liverpool, and you're not playing, then you could say, ah, uh, well, there's a there's hey, a. Hey, you see how he slipped Arsenal into that conversation? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hey, one of these things is not like the other, man. They, they might have been in the English Premier League I get right it. now. That's four all games, I'm saying. Though. Four That's true. Uh, Matt Turner is chomping at the bit to get the start, but unfortunately, Arsenal's gotten that great start to the season. He's just got to wait for a loss, Jimmy, and then he's going to be right in there. Yeah, yeah or, or I, I, uh... back to back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. All right, let's go. Stay on the number nine right now. In that position, obviously, it's wide open for us as we see it. I know Jesus Ferrer probably would be getting the start if the, the World Cup started tomorrow. But Haji Wright scored his second consecutive brace in mm-hmm. Turkey. Uh, his team lost 5-2, to two, but he's doing his part. He, uh has taken his goals with real confidence. I don't know if you guys saw either one of the goals. It's just like he hits this one first time when he could have taken an extra touch. I'm like, God damn, this guy's got some confidence. So he's, he's doing well uh, on a personal level. His team is in 10th, but he's only one goal off the top uh, in Turkey, the Super League. For the golden boot right now he's only trailing mm-hmm. enter valencia by one and enters playing for Vener- Venerbahce. and then jordan pifak who recently put out a tweet essentially saying we can call him whatever we want jordan pifak sibachu yeah if it's up to me i'm just calling him into the september camp baby that's what i'm talking about <laughs> the dude is on fire he had two assists this past weekend as union berlin cruise past schalke or i like to call him scheisse 6-1 and they're now tied on top of the bundesliga table with bayern munich so well played to union berlin uh josh Sargent, crazy Finally gets to play his best position up top in the last three games. Got four goals. Coincidence? I think not. He got the game winner this past weekend away to Sunderland. I think my favorite part of this goal was that Timo Puki had actually come in. So he come on as a sub in the 60th minute. So there's like 15 minutes of Puki and Sargent both up top. And, and Sargent still found a way to make the difference. And that's going to have to be a relationship where they can find a way to both succeed and coexist. And have Sargent, who I think has proven you got to put him higher up the field to him to make a difference so just keep an eye on that for dean smith's team as they move forward because pookie's usually the number nine or had been previously uh and and those are kind of the other guys that are and brandon vasquez scored for fc cincinnati sorry Mm -hmm. this past weekend he missed a sitter but what i liked was five to ten minutes after missing a sitter like a tap in from five yards away he hit it over he does end up scoring a goal so i like that he found a way to kind of fight through that disappointment and that's his kind of confidence he has right now and ended up slotting one against the Columbus crew. That game ended 2-2. So, so uh, these are the guys that I want to bring. Mm-hmm. Bring in Haji Wright, Jordan Pifak, Josh Sargent. 
I'd bring in Brandon Vasquez and Jesus for, I bring all five of those dudes in for the September camp. You got two games and whoever's training well to Charlie's point. And, and obviously as you get to see how they interact with different players in, that are going to be starting for the U S but I think you give them like, you on your back on their back. That's the question because you bring in all these strikers. You want them to be doing well. You want them in form. You want them in, to be confident, but you can only give so many chances in two matches to these players, right? Yep. So yep. how do you decide? Yo, you have some that- hey, you, you have some intense 11 of the 11s. You're like, you know what, boys? For the next 40 minutes, two 20-minute halves, we're getting after it. <laughs> and PFOC, if you really want to be on this team, I need to see mm-hmm. you pressing in the way that we're going to press. Brandon, I need to see how you're going to combine with the Brendan Aronson or whoever, whatever combinations of players you're looking at and, and, and how you're creating space and passing lanes and also what you're doing on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, I think you put them in, in some situations and you let them get after it. Do, I don't do know, you, man. I, I don't think uh, this I, is the, this is the thing. Like, you don't strikers don't change that much. No, you know, he's not but, you're not like like getting the effort in 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 a in a. uh so, are you Haji saying Wright's, no Haji Wright and PFOC then? Because we have already well, seen Well, PFOC, it, you got to take into stock. Every game, PFOC is subbed at 60 or 70 minutes. He, he doesn't play 90 minutes. You know why? Because he typically... got to close out games, Jimmy. They got to close he, out he games. He typically you know? peters out. He doesn't have the stamina. We're not seeing that same production in ter- terms of influence within the game. You're talking about pressing. You're talking about being able to work if they are in you the guys, Yes, the team's doing well, but... If you know you have to sub him every game in a World Cup at the 60th minute, is that still your starter? You guys have to be Maybe. Jordan P. Fucking kidding me, you know? Because <laughs> oh, Jimmy was saving that one. <laughs> I did. I had it ready. That's to pretty go. good. How long did he oh, play that? You like How that one? He no, no, no. yeah. I've been sitting he on that one. He hangs out with Ted Lasso for five days, and the guy is throwing out these jokes. You gotta be Jordan P. Fucking kidding me. Listen, listen, listen. I'm not saying we have to start the guy if you bring him with us, but I think we need. No, you bring him. You bring him. You we need to have one hundred percent. You bring him. But okay. there's a difference between him and Haji Wright, I think. And 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 in terms of, I think Pfock has has more tools to his not tools, but like he does maybe the same game better than than Haji Wright does. Yes, Haji Wright's scoring a lot of goals, but w- just watching the two of them, I think I still think Pfock is better than where Haji so Wright that's, is. That's that's an either or and, for you guys. It's either Haji or Pfock. You don't you're not bringing both. I I I agree with you. The, on that. Are you talking about into camp? Yeah. Oh, oh, I'd bring both into well. Yeah, for camp that, I would bring both. Yeah, um, why not? Bring both. Bring both. Because I, I think you should reward for them. But in terms of bringing them to a World Cup, they're pretty duplicative in terms of the players. You're only going to need one. Yeah, they're going to have depth, and you got 26 players. So maybe there is a flyer on on both of them at some point. But for me, uh, just having we've all played with with somebody that comes into the team, and you're like, okay, we're a pressing team, or this, or that, and that striker comes in, and you're like, oh yeah, that striker, they'll they'll buy into the system. Nope. Nope. Right, I'm saving right. my energy for the goal, you know, get me in and around the goal. And that's where I use my energy. You guys do all the work. It's not always easy to just because the, the sexy way to play or because Greg wants to play this pressing game that people are going to buy into that or even understand what that pressing game means. Charlie was one of the few guys I remember from from uh, of being a high energy pressing type of guy to make things uncomfortable, force that first player to put their head down. And then it, the game becomes predictable from there for players behind it. But not everyone ever buys into that because they think in their mind, like I'm wasting all this energy mm-hmm. or, or they think they are pressing when they're not. And the game has, has evolved and changed a bit. So that's my worry about how much the team, uh, again, not to go back to, to, to uh, what, what happened with, with uh, on Friday night with, with Gareth Bale and Carlos Vela on the field, but you m- more so than them checking the ball all the time, defensively, you don't have any press anymore and everyone can break through that. And take that to the highest level at the international game at a world cup. One player shows up late on a press. Any team in that world cup is breaking that press. And now all of a sudden you're tracking 40 yards back to reset and like a mid to a lower block. And I just think that's, that's a big problem, especially in the way that Greg wants to play. Charlie, I don't know if you're picking up what Heath is putting down, but I'm sensing that he just doesn't like Jordan Pfock or Haji Wright. I don't know. I'm going with Pfock. (laughs) Haji Wright. I actually like Haji Wright, but his body language didn't show me a ton in that. I I agree with you, Heath. Body Thank you, Charlie. Is, is, body language is body a language thing, is baby. A, is it a is a big thing. signal and a big key in determining how much do they want it? How much are they bought in? What's the work ethic like? What's the attitude, the mentality? You almost got the sense that Haji was like, I already, this is mine. Like, I got it. I don't have to, I don't have to show that I'm I have friend, to earn this Christian and Pulisic. I want this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but w- what I like about Jordy Pufok, I think, is, 
is his ability to say, you know what? I'm just going to stick to my strengths. I'm going to do my thing. I don't care about all the noise or the chatter. I can't do this. I can't do this. I just got to score. That's my goal. As a striker, I just got to score. Now, if you score and you don't do the pressing to, to the best of your ability or the best of what people think that standard should be, as long as you put in the back of the net, that that's that's the key because not too many people can do it and do it effectively. Now, you're talking about a World Cup. You need a big target striker. You're going to get service. Then, then P folks, your guy. If he's doing it yeah, week yeah. in and week out, the Bundesliga and Union Berlin are in the Champions League spot. Then, yes, one, he's for sure going to the World Cup. That's without a doubt. Now you can debate: Does he fit into your tactics in the first 60, 70 minutes of a game? You can you can argue that versus coming in as a game changing substitute who then all of a sudden your focus is just driving balls into the box because maybe you're on the front foot, you're chasing the game, you need a striker who is just a predator, who's going to be a big body, then that's – that's it depends on what Greg Berhalter's tactics are. I, I'm going to say that I think that Jordan Pifak will be a situational sub. He's going to come on for the U.S. in the World Cup. If we're down a goal or if it's tight and the other team is already if, – if we're down a goal, then I you already ha- – you're not even have to worry about him pressing. Because the other team's going to be sitting back on top of their box. They're going to be launching the ball. They're going to try to maybe attack and try to counterattack in twos and threes as opposed to really trying to transition their team in a meaningful way where you do need PFOC to, to do a little bit more defensively. But if we're down a goal with 15 minutes, 20 minutes left, you put PFOC out there because all of our guys are naturally going to try to push forward to, to and be in more advanced positions to try to win the ball back so we can continue to put that urgency and that pressure on the opposing team. So I don't even know if but if that's circumstantial Jimmy, in this game. Yeah, yeah. If that's circumstantial, then where where do you where where what circumstance do you put Haji Wright in a World Cup game at this no, point? No, no, no. I I I wouldn't at this point. Pfock yeah. would be my guy that you go with. Yeah. So I think Haji Wright, and if you if if Greg and his staff are actually doing this type of exercise to work through, then why even waste a spot on Haji Wright? to bring him into the September camp. You'd be like, I saw what we needed to see back in, in the June games. Uh, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to bring Ricardo Pepe back in one more time just to put our, our arm around him and say, Hey buddy, we still believe in you and see what he looked like when you come into camp. Well, but, what about but, Sergeant, by the way, Sergeant, I want, Char- I want Charlie's take on Sar- where's Sergeant in the, in the depth chart, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie, uh, tell put us. a number on it. Where is he at in the depth chart right now? Yeah. Give us your depth chart. Yeah. Time I would say it, maybe Josh Time Sergeant. Josh Sargent is number four in the depth chart right now. Behind. He's number four. Okay. Right now, Ricard, um, Jesus Ferrer is number one mm-hmm. in the depth chart right now. Number two, I Charlie think you Gale. have to put Jordan P. Folk right now as the number mm-hmm. two striker okay, in the depth okay. chart. All right. He's producing in the Bundesliga. Right. Three. Now, it would have been Ricardo Pepe, but I, I just think, you know, you get your first start. You get subbed off first. Now, if he kept playing, I'd say, oh, yeah, you know, that's your guy. But he he's falling off. So three right now, I, I – Connor Casey. I, I still think Haji <laughs> Wright is number three. Three uh, and, Haji and four, Wright. And four is Josh Sargent. Okay. Okay. So no Edson Buttle. No, no Edson Buttle. Or no Robbie Finley. Or <laughs> no Robbie Finley. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, no Taylor okay. Twelman. Okay. So Brian, Brian Ching. Ching's out. Uh, Brian Ching's but, out. <laughs> but, but Brandon Vasquez is five. And and I think he's gonna get a look. I think he has to get so, a look because so Pepe's six now. Yeah, <laughs> he's falling off. He Pierce is taking notes right now. He's looking down. No, I, I I actually I I don't disagree on where Pepe's falling in. Like, there's been no signal to me that Pepe is going to increase his chances of playing and scoring. One because the team that team. I mean, they they get they get they get run on most of the game, uh, mm-hmm. and they're you're going to get half chances, counterattack, one maybe one chance a game. And Ricardo Pepe, I just don't see the form uh, or belief in his form that when he gets a half chance, he's going to score. And so he gets to start, doesn't even get the ninety minutes. Um, has been playing scrap minutes before that, so he's definitely way down uh, the depth chart. I still believe in Ricardo Pepe in the right circumstances to to be a top top striker for the national team, but it seems very very far from that right now. Uh, the sergeant one though, Jimmy. In terms of four, the only reason I'm agreeing with Charlie at four because I, I remember Sargent and the national team not being impactful over 90 minutes in terms of the way the national team plays. I don't know where Josh Sargent fits in in terms of can you be impactful when you don't touch the ball a ton of times compared to a 
a, a Jesus Ferreira who has uh, is more dynamic and being a little bit of a a false nine. Jordan Pifak who has more physical attributes that can be impactful, hold up play things like that. Josh Sargent I think was a hold up play kind of guy for a while or scrapping uh, in those places, but I don't remember him being super impactful. So it's hard for me to see kind of where let's let's not forget that. it. Josh Sargent he's scoring, but he's in the championship. He's not playing in the Bundesliga. He's not playing in the English Premier League. He's not playing in La Liga or Serie A. Let's not overrate. Let's not overrate the championship just because it's the second division to the best uh, league in the world. It's the championship. Let's not forget Daryl DK scored what like 15 goals in the championship and, and crushed it and, and couldn't trap a ball in the Gold Cup. Okay. So let's not go crazy. So I what you. I will I say you. is but what I will say is Sergeant, yes. He's a complete striker. I, I've I've watched the kid since he was 16. I've always been impressed with him. I think going to making the wrong decision with clubs has has been difficult for him in his progress because now you're playing at clubs. Yes, there's a relegation fight, and it, it gives you a lot in terms of experience of, but, but, of dealing okay. how to, to how to how to play with those type of level uh, games. But if you aren't playing with the ball, your team's just defending and you're playing long balls. You're not getting proper chances. It's not, it's not a great, uh, that's Ricardo Pepe at Augsburg. That's right. one second. What I'll say is though, by his team collectively dropping down to the championship, they're not doing that. They're not getting overrun for 75, 80 minutes of a game in the Premier league. They're actually getting to play at the championship level. And now we're getting to see when you put him mm -hmm. in his best spot that, Hey, by the way, this guy's actually pretty good when we put him in a number nine spot, 100%. And his team can actually maintain some possession. So, so there are some counters to that championship for me is one of the most competitive leagues in the world. No one said it wasn't competitive. I, I know just, you didn't, but I'm just saying in terms of the okay. level and the defense, some of the defending, like his goal, the, the, I, when I watched the goal against Sunderland this past weekend, the, the lack of awareness by the, the center back and the outside back was so bad. I mean, he must have been laughing. Like nobody gets a body on him. Nobody anticipates that. So yes, some of the defending in the championship at I, times can be. I've never, of I've never said the championship is not competitive. I never said the championship is is worse than Major League Soccer. I never said those words. What no, I, I understand. What I have I'm said to put is, them in your mouth. <laughs> it, 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 yes. What I have said is it's not the English Premier League. It's not La Liga. It's not Bundesliga. It's not a top division in Europe. Right. So. Mm -hmm. When he's scoring goals, it's great. His confidence is up. He is a center forward, so he's finally not playing right wing. He's not he's not just defending most of the time or trying to make runs and cross the ball to to to, to other strikers. Man. He's playing his position, which is great. It was the top score for Bremen uh, their last year when they got relegated. Um, I, I I in the top five league. Can I put? I'm going to put my flag in the ground. I know we we're a little ways away from the roster being named on November 9th. By Greg Brohalt is going to name the U.S. Men's National Team roster on November 9th. I think Josh Sargent's going to go. I, I'm I'm going to I don't know how big of a swing that is given his form over the last three games, but I think because he's played for Greg before, there's not going to be a transition period. It's not like a Haji Wright who'd never played for Greg and has to get caught up. He's played for Greg. He knows he knows the guys obviously, and uh, confidence was key for him. And now if you put him in his best spot. I think he'll be. I think he'll get called in the camp. I think he'll do well in this camp, and I think he'll end up making the team. That that's that's any other number. You guys I hope so. Any, any Jimmy, I nine? hope so. I'd be happy. I'd be happy. I'd be happy if Sergeant. You know, the again where I look at Sergeant when I think about him, a scoring teenager. You look past all the other things like his hold up play, his first touch, all those things because you go, hey, he's playing in the Bundesliga, and it's amazing, and he's running and he's out of control all the time, but he's busy and he's scoring goals. Great. You now fast forward a couple of years. Last year was a write-off. This mm -hmm. year, he's still what? He's twenty-two. Is he twenty-two? Something like that. I think Who, sergeant. Sergeant. Yeah, twenty-two, think, twenty-three. Yeah. yeah. And, and and so he's still got plenty of upside in 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 his growth of his game. But I look past. I look back to all those things and say, okay, in the national team again, we've talked about guys like this. You need to be ninety-nine percent hold-up play as a striker for this national team. Otherwise, this national team's in trouble because if you don't know. Exactly. When to hold the ball, when to bring it down, when to control it, when to lay it off, when to stay in the box. When you don't understand the flow of those things at the international level, our team falls apart pretty quickly. Um, and so that's what I'm looking at for Josh Sargent in terms yeah. of his game getting better. We know he can score goals. He scored in the Bundesliga as, 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 as a young player. We know that he can get in and around the box and finish those types of things. You're seeing it now in the championship. It's can it be, can it be consistently at the next level, but can all the other things that are not scoring goals be a high enough standard that if he's not scoring goals, he's still, again, being impactful for the national team. Because we have guys that can score in any position on our national team. Yeah, it's true. We're looking for Olivier Giroud, who didn't score a goal when France won the World Cup. I wouldn't go that back. far. 
I'm just saying we're looking for. We need our. We are looking. We are looking for him. We are though. We are looking for a a player that can help us can connect and combine. Because as Heath mentioned, obviously we have a lot of talented midfielders and wingers that can. uh, But that's why that's why I loved Ricardo Pepe so much when he played with the national team is that he made all those other players when he was good better around him. He brought Mm -hmm. Christian Pulisic into the game. He brought our attackers into the game. Lay off, spin out, do things that are like dynamic, quick sprints that bring all these other players around him, bring out the best of them. And then you know he 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 was capable of scoring a goal when he was informed too. But it was it was that ability to just be engaged. We saw him a lot. We saw our striker when when he had his good games, not necessarily his bad games, but we had his good games. He was engaged with our attack, and they you could see him connected all the time, which I which I liked. And hopefully Josh Sargent can be that. All right, one bold prediction from you guys in the number nine spot right now, August 29th, ninth, twenty twenty two. I got Josh Sargent making the World Cup team. I think he's going to do it. Uh, Charlie, I'll come to you first. With regard to the number nines, you have a bold prediction about what's going to happen. It could be one. It could be Jordan P. Fox scoring the winner against England. Whatever you oh, want. Boy. I just want to. I just want to see. A uh, give me a bold prediction, prediction here on, on this day. You got one for us, or Heath, if you're ready for it. You I'm going to throw it. Brandon Vasquez as my flyer. All right, like, you're going to so, make the team. So you, he makes the team, is what you're saying, yeah, Brandon yeah, Vasquez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, be a star, but I don't. I don't have any bold predictions. Because it's nothing really bold that can come out of it. I'm not going to be crazy and say, Peppy, hey. Peppy, <laughs> Peppy could Peppy. be your bold prediction. Peppy. Yeah, Pe- you- Peppy making the World Cup roster. That, yeah, that's you- that's a bold prediction considering where he is right now. I would say because he's so different than most of the players. Mm, man. Sergeant could be your bold prediction if you that's want. That's my. That's he can't like, don't, don't, you can't just eliminate it. We can't eliminate it and leave Charlie with just like going like. Uh, uh, that's fair. I'm, that's you fair. Know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to be crazy. Uh, I will say, I'm going to stick with Ricardo Pepe because I we've seen his his ceiling. I'm, my bold prediction is he makes the roster. Wow, okay. that's what I'm gonna say. Uh, that's that's I'm, pretty I'm bold actually. That. You went you went from like I don't have one to like the boldest. Yeah, I think I'll go bold. I'll go bold bold. Yeah. Ricardo Pepe making the roster. Heath mm-hmm. has Brandon Vasquez. I have Josh Sargent. We'll see who's right on November 9th when the roster is announced by Greg Berhalter. All right, we're going to take our first and only break of in soccer. We trust when we come back, we'll break down all the other fun stuff that the players are doing around Chris Walken. Europe and, you. and MLS. And uh, yeah, it should be a little, a lot of fun. Don't go anywhere. We need a new samurai. Right. No, not it. Not it. I'm going to go clean up this town. Oh, my. Oh, oh. Witness the beginning. I'm a bad dog. Oh. Of a new legend. It's showtime. Ah! What the mother, father, cock of spaniels going on here? You have one itsy bitsy tiny weeny bite of success. I'm sorry, tiny what? Tiny weeny. What? what? Uh-huh. Get back out there. Pause of Fury. Ready PG. Ah! Now streaming on Paramount Plus. Welcome back, everyone, to In Soccer We Trust. I'm Jimmy Cream Cheese Trash Can Conrad here with Charlie Chuck Mike and Davies and Hollywood Heat Pierce. And we have to tell you that Paramount Plus is the only place to stream every minute of every Serie A match. It's the top league in Italy. And you can quickly and easily sign up for your very own account right now with a free one-month trial by going to ParamountPlus.com forward slash Italy. Just click the Try It Free button and use promo code Italy for instant access to the best Italian club soccer, also known as Calcio. Available across all of your devices. Visit ParamountPlus.com forward slash Italy and start streaming today. That league is probably my favorite in Europe because it's so wide open. I really have no idea who's going to take the Scudetto this season. But let's stay there in this country. Heath, will come to you first. Weston McKinney and Juventus took on Roma. It was a 1-1 at the end of the day. But McKinney did not start. And mm-hmm. this guy named Rabio, who I thought was on his way to Manchester United, did get the start next to Locatelli. A little disappointed that McKinney didn't start, but he came off for the last 13 minutes to, I guess, see the game out or, or to maybe uh, nick a goal at the end, but it didn't happen. Little, uh, are you are you disappointed like me that he didn't get the start in this one? Uh, I yeah, so. a little bit, just yeah. because it's a little bit. I mean, the, uh, yeah. man, do I have to say Paul Pogba? Yeah, uh, well, there's I mean, a lot I mean, of Paul Pogba stuff going on right now. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I don't know. I went from from being like this guy. I'm ne- never worried about this guy to being like, well, they do have some depth. The, the, the upside that I think about Juventus is they're not Juventus from two years ago, three years ago, where they had this massive team of names that I don't think Weston would have fit into that. And then Weston sort of been on the backside of, you know, uh, financial issues with the club of trying to shed weight and all these things. And so I still think that he's in a competitive spot to be able to be a starter moving forward because uh, they don't have what what is a team that I think is built to win the Scudetto and focus on Champions League. They, I mean, they're focused on 
hopefully winning, hopefully finishing in the top to compete for a Scudetto and hopefully going deep in the Champions League versus, you know, teams of the past, which were focused on, hey, we're going to cruise to uh, a Scudetto and Champions League is our big, our big push. And what I find interesting, Charlie, is the fact that this midfield three for Juve was Locatelli, Rabio, and Moretti. And you have Zacharia, who they just got from the Bundesliga last season, and McKinney both on the bench. Uh, both of them came on during the game, but it felt like those were the guys they were going to be leaning on. Those those two, Locatelli and Pogba, were really going to be the midfield driving forward. Rabio seemed to be on the outs and outs, but then all of a sudden, he gets a big start against Roma. I found that to be really interesting. But I also saw that uh, the Gazetta, one of the publications reputable rep publications from what I understand in Italy reporting that the club is open. Juve is open to listening to offers for Weston McKinney, but they don't want a loan deal. They only want a permanent move. And that's now scaring some of the clubs away because I think Tottenham and Manchester United were both expressing mm -hmm. some interest in Weston McKinney. If it, that that's a big surprise to me that there's at least a little smoke now around the future of Weston McKinney. I know we're getting close to the transfer window ending. And so this will go away at some point, but uh that didn't. Su that doesn't surprise me because his name's been floated ever since he's been a Juve player. So mm -hmm. it, it's not something where they they said you uh, Weston McKinney is our future and we're going to lock him in and he's he's central to our success. Now he's played, he's earned his playing time and he's done well, especially in Champions League with with Juve. But I always thought that wasn't going to be his final destination. It, it was a place where he's going to make the most. Uh, of of his opportunities and obviously put himself um, out there for for a lot of clubs to to take interest. I know Tottenham ha has been uh, really interested in taking Weston McKinney, so it's it's not a surprise for me. He he him and Christian Pulisic are kind of in the same position where you just have to continue to prove yourself every week and, and hope that you, you get into a good form and you stay injury free and you just ride it out. Yeah, no, I think you're right. It's going to be interesting, though, for, for a lot of clubs and a lot of players uh, before the transfer window closes. We'll see if McKinney makes any moves. Now, before we get into our players playing in the Premier League, let's talk about the Bundesliga because uh, we've already talked about Jordan Pifak, but Joe Scally played 90 minutes against Bayern Munich at the Allianz Arena in Munich, and it was a 1-1 draw. And uh, shout out to, to Scally for getting that trust, as we've discussed in, in previous podcasts. Now, he said this before the Bayern game as it pertains to the U.S. men's national team. This is a quote from Joe Scali. I'm very focused, or I was very focused and ready for his opportunity back in the June camp. I kept preparing for it because I knew I had to show myself. I didn't play my best game against Uruguay, but it happens. Training was good. So, you know, I'm, I'm focused right now on the club. So for September, I hope I'm called in. Hopefully I've deserved it. And the last camp, I've showed it. Do you think Joe Scally gets called in, Heath Pierce? What, what are you saying about Joe Scally? And because if you watch this game against Munch and Gladbach versus Bayern, there were a couple times where Saudi Amani got the better of him at the back post. Where yeah. he's... Jimmy, Jan Sommer set a record for most saves in a Bundesliga match ever at 19. They Bayern scored on their 25th shot. It was a complete yeah. blowout. But if I was Joe Scally, I'd be super happy because you you left uh Allianz with a point. Um, but yeah, you, you're playing against, uh, you know, it, it's, it, that's a tough, it, it, it's like Charlie, I don't remember who we were talking about last time where Charlie was like, you know, you're going to get skinned in a game like that a few times. Right. Uh, and, but Gladbach now got a, got a point out of that. That's a team, team effort or team. They, result. They also, good, but Gladbach also scored on their first shot of the game in the 43rd minute. It took him 43 yeah. minutes to get a shot on goal. And it's because Upa McConnell made a mistake that led to it. But, but yeah, I, I just, Joe Scally for me, it's interesting because he's 19. And Sadio Mane, obviously, ton of experience, and he should have scored. Well, Sadio Mane did score. They called it back on VAR early in the game, maybe 10, 15 minutes in. And Scali had him and then didn't have him, and then Mane scores. I mean, that's what you're going to face when you're playing at the highest level. So that's what he's going to face. Just, I, yeah, I just don't see that, like, there's just this. You know when you watch players and you just look like they're You look, you look the part. Yeah. He yeah, doesn't yeah, look yeah, the part. Yeah, yeah he, he looks just like almost – Almost like, yeah, he doesn't look like he's fully there yet in terms of confidence, mm -hmm. in terms of owning that spot. It's very almost reactionary, and he's got the athleticism. He's got all these things, but I haven't seen this big jump of like 30-plus now Bundesliga games that he's gotten to where you go, okay, if I were to watch it without knowing who Joe Scally is, I would still see what I, what I feel to be a young, inexperienced fullback on the field whenever he's in and around the ball. He's good on the ball, good passer, all those types of things, but I still think he's got... He needs more minutes and more jumps, but I think he gets called in for sure. You yeah. Think he, oh, okay. So you think uh, he's I'm with gets you, Heath. In. Yeah. But yeah, he doesn't he, look the part. 
No, no, I, I'm the game. He, he even admitted it himself, which is difficult for a player to say, you know what? I actually wasn't that good in, in the match. He wasn't. And for Greg Berhalter, yeah, training might be, he was pretty solid, but I think that game highlighted a, a big uh, portion of his, his insecurities in, in terms of being on the pitch as a right back. Cause you, you feel like he's chasing the game. Like right. it, it is reactionary, but it's mostly I'm not I'm not owning it and and taking runs in behind, stretching the the back line, using the width to my advantage. I'm more oh I, I'm afraid to make a mistake. That's what it looks like. It's I'm just trying not to make a mistake, and it's almost like ragtag defending. You know, always got to always have to slide tackle. You know, you're 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 playing on the edge, mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and for me, mm-hmm. he he needs to slow it down a little bit, and so. Just well, because he's playing four four straight Bundesliga games, I think he gets the call up. But I I don't think he's the answer at right back right we, now. We, we have a lot of options. You got Cannon, you got Yedlin, you got Dest. Dest wasn't in the eighteen again for Barcelona this season. They try to figure out his situation. Maybe he goes to United. Who knows? Well, he just but, said he's staying. He put out a statement. He's okay, gonna, stay. he's going to stay. So all right, all right. Well, at least that gets you lose the uncertainty and i think both club and player can just move forward knowing that he's going to be an option so that's good to know not just for his situation for yeah, any but like, he had to earn that trust already from javi who then wrote him off again i know, uh, and, I know. and like i i don't know man i don't know all right let's go to let's go to premier league i'm going to just go through the, the results for our players and then you guys can jump in uh charlie i'll come to you first once i'm done with this so leeds plays away to brighton at the amex they lose one zero the first loss of the season Brendan Harrison actually started centrally in this one to accommodate Daniel James on one side and Jack Harrison on the other. Rodrigo was up top. I do want to say, and I give a shout out to Jesse Marsh, who and I, we talked about it last week, but it allowed me to come to training and get to see some of the, the, the how the sausage is made behind the scenes. That was very cool. And obviously watching the team in a little bit of a different way now that I have some a little bit of insight. Tyler Adams, pretty solid, but I don't know if he had as much. Maybe didn't stand out as much. It was, a, I think, just a tough performance overall. I thought Brighton very well coached by by Graham Potter and maybe did a little bit more. I thought in the first half, it was all bright. In the second half, I thought there were some adjustments that Jesse made that did see make it a little bit more on the balance. Uh, but interesting that Brendan started centrally and didn't have as much of an influence. I think maybe we could all agree that he's better out yeah. wide. Chelsea win 2-1 despite being a man down for 65 minutes of the game. Uh, Pulisic plays the last 15, but the guy that essentially replaced him in the starting lineup, Raheem Sterling, scored twice his first two goals of the year. So mm-hmm. Pulisic's situation doesn't look like it's going to improve anytime soon. Uh, Arsenal Fulham Fulham goes up a goal. I was at this game. Arsenal come back into it. Um, you know, Reem I thought was pretty solid, but like he got did on the first goal. What's that? He could have closed he was better. Done, right? He was done on the first goal. Yeah, right. He got cut and then couldn't recover on that. Uh, I, I it's think not a recipe for success to defend no. like that. For, for it's Arsenal. I get it. Their attack is unbelievable. You know, but but to go ninety minutes for a full season sitting on top of your box like. It's great that they've gotten early points. I think that's a huge part of yeah. getting early points in the season. But man, that is not. He also a got subbed recipe. off, which I found to be kind of interesting. As like your your captain center back getting subbed off. Now I know that he he got a little tweak uh, earlier in the game, or he got knocked, you know, his back or his hammy or whatever. Uh, Crystal Palace up two zero, and Chris Richards comes on as a sub with his team up two one at this point, and then Holland early in Holland scores three. And so Richards was marking him on one play and very similar to Joe Scali and Sadio Mane just kind of lost him. It was a bit of a deflection. I don't completely uh, put it on Chris, but I think he played left back, didn't he? He came on. He like did for a little back. bit. I think yeah, he, they went to a three right? and then he played yeah. on the right side of the three. Yeah. And and either way, they gave up. They were up to zero and lost four to two. So it's not a good look. And it's unfortunate that the Chris had to be a part of that. It's one of those like, how would have been cool to maybe see that one from the bench. So you're not responsible but obviously a great experience to go up against some of the best players he played against holland in in the bundesliga with hoffenheim so it's not like that's a new experience for him i'm, I'm curious Jimmy, when when you were over there in england and you're hanging out with coach beard and 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 jason sedegas were they do they know everything about the american players over there do you have any conversations about yeah oh, you know, of course yeah yeah so coach beard is, is amazing coach beard and and brendan hunts his name uh, he, they, he listens to the podcast. So just know that if you're a subscriber out there, so is Brendan Hunt, also known as coach beard. Uh, one of their producers, Chip Hamilton, Chip's amazing. He also is a diehard U S men's national team fan. They listen to the podcast a lot. So shout out to them. They, they want to talk about it. They're asking questions. They want to know more. They have their own opinions on it because they are also watching and, and seeing how the guys are playing and performing. Um, 
And then Jason is more, I'd say more of a casual, you know I mean? He's in, he understands what's going on. I think his buy-in to the sport has been much bigger, obviously since Ted Lasso started. And, and uh, it's been cool to, to kind of see how excited he gets when our players do well, but I wouldn't say he, and he would even admit that he isn't like the diehard of all diehards uh, with regard to knowing all the stats and how the guys are playing. But, but in terms of, um, like his passion for it is is off the charts, so it's pretty cool. But yeah, it was so I would I was sitting right above, so basically Brendan and Chip sat right in front of me for the Arsenal game, and then I would just poke in between them, and then we just kind of talk tactics about how Anthony's moving and how Tim Ream is moving, and hey, we saw Matt Turner warming up, you know, like little things like that, and getting excited about those little things. So yeah, those guys are are really really bought in, and it, and it's it's pretty neat. And if I can, if I can. Uh, figure out a way to get them on the show. We're going to have to make that happen at, at mm -hmm. some points, but no, that whole experience was, was, was pretty cool. And, and it's just cool to see how excited they were. And even when I got to speak to uh, Brendan before, uh, when I got to go on the onset, which was amazing. Charlie, I, I don't know why you asked this question, dude. He's, I'm he's, just saying, he's listen, talk for the rest of the show. No, now, I'm not. I'm going to be done right here. But, but, I, I was, I was interested. That's why uh, no, but, but, but <laughs> he Brendan, was. But yeah. Brendan, uh, he goes to all the World Cups and he follows the U.S. team around. That is awesome. And he awesome. absolutely loves it. And he gets all dressed up and he goes for it. And and he was at my World Cup games in 2006, which was was really cool. And did he remember uh, you like from that? Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's it's really neat. So, uh, yeah, so the whole experience was cool. And maybe we should have a, another side sidebar on it another time. Do you but think he remembers me from the 2010 final camp before the World Cup? You know, what? I'll have to it? ask him. I'll have to ask him. <laughs> well, he knows who you guys are. He listens to the podcast. So he clearly knows. Uh, the final 30, Holly, Charlie. Holly. Do you think he knows the final 30 before they went down to 23 and announced the, the final run? <laughs> he, he might. <laughs> now, listen, listen. There was one story I wanted to talk Captain about. Because, almost. Because, because apparently Christian Pulisic's dad is liking social media posts that are crit criticizing Thomas Tuchel. And, oh, and. Gosh. I, I, I getting involved. Well, never, I don't, I guess, I guess my big question here is what would you tell your dad if, if, if he was doing that? So, so come on, so, dad, stop. I mean, I don't, if my dad <laughs> was out there doing that, I'd be like, dude, what the, you're, so not, you're, not, remember, you're not helping me. You're not helping me right I now. I remember in a national team camp, I had gotten a foot injury before we played against Ecuador and somebody else when Bob first came on and. I got this foot injury and wasn't going to be in the plane in the game. Some random journalist calls my house. Like my parents had a house phone, house, house line then calls the house. My mom's like, oh yeah, he's like hurt his foot. And like, you know, like hopefully it's like my mom just being this on like Somebody called and just genuinely asked. And then it comes out as a report. And I remember getting in trouble, like me personally getting in trouble for it. Like being like, you, you know, you got to have control of this whole thing. And like the narrative and blah, blah, blah. And being like, dude, some random person called my parents' house and asked my mom a question. I remember having to have a talk with my parents and being like, hey, Probably best to just stay out of this type of stuff. <laughs> like a major injury. I just wasn't playing in in the next two games, and and I remember that being a learning a learning moment, one of a thousand that I had during my career. Um, that it didn't go the way that I thought. But I mean, liking things specifically, there's more to it than that, you know. I mean, I've I've blindly liked things when you're scrolling and whatever because you just brain does it. But like that seems a little specific and a little bit like people know it's going to say, you know, Mark Pulisic. Like, I'm searching. Oh, I'm searching yeah. for. Yeah, Thomas Tuchel like, like Thomas Tuchel uh, hashtag Thomas Tuchel out hashtags on uh, yeah. on social media to be yeah. like, oh, this Look, one randomly came into my feed. Like Thomas Tuchel sucks. All right, hashtag okay, <laughs> yeah, all right, like, like, <laughs> like, 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 like. <laughs> Charlie, what would you tell your pops if uh, if he was doing that? I'd just be like, I'm gonna I'm gonna just ban you from all my stuff. So <laughs> you're gonna put that computer down and and let me take care of it. I'm a, I'm an adult. I'm a grown I'm a man. Grown I'm, ass man, Dad. I'm a I'm in a I'm in a bad situation, but it's really not that bad. I'm at Chelsea. I, I I'm not I'm not playing in the fourth division in England. Like I'm at Chelsea. I'm Look at my hair, playing. Dad. I'm a grown it's, man. I'm it's grown fine. Listen. Like at the end of the day, it's fine, right? <laughs> Yes, I, I want to be playing. You want me to be playing. I know you're proud of me. Great. But let, let me work it out. This this is what pro sports is all about. You, it's not always it's not always green. It's all, not always gold. You, there's ups and downs. I'm going to be better in the end for it. Th this is how, how it goes. And so whether I'm, I'm at Chelsea next year or not, I'm going to be better for this, this, this difficult time. And, and we've seen Christian. I mean, he's had to prove himself every week he, he he might be the best player on the pitch and next week he's on the bench that's that thomas tuchel has done that to him and sometimes it's because they know his reaction is never going to change he's going to always fight for it he's not going to say i give up where you see some players who just say 
screw it. I'm done. I'll, I'll collect my paycheck. I don't have to, I don't have to push it. So, um, yes, it's I, frustrating, but if I was pulling 16, I'd be him. like, dude, why is your dad, what's your dad doing? You know, like, <laughs> like, why is your dad even involved in this at all? It is really, really funny when he checks uh, into hotels. How many keys? Uh, two, please. One for me and one for my dad. Uh, no, but I would say, I mean, it's, it must be, it's, it's gotta be really hard for, for, uh, a parent, right? Because I would say probably Weston McKinney and Christian Pulisic have probably faced the most scrutiny of any player in our history. Maybe Landon Donovan in terms of his general choices of how to, uh, you know, where playing he Europe, should be challenging MLS. Europe yeah, yeah. versus MLS. But generally speaking, these guys face uh, a level of uh, of hatred from fans that that I don't think any of us ever got anywhere even remotely well, close to. Until um, Landon decided to support Mexico for a while. <laughs> yeah, that that's true. That's true. That 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 certainly uh, elevated the temperature in the room a little bit. But you know, and, and so if you're a parent, especially as involved as he is, because he has been involved from the very beginning with with Christian, right? It's not like my parents were like didn't know anything about anything until all of a sudden I was on TV and they're like, "Look what we did." Uh, uh, but for him, he's been involved in every step of Christian's career, right? Uh, and, and so to 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 see you're seeing a lot more than probably even Christian sees in terms of being a parent. It's probably rough at times to feel like you should sit back and the amount of people that I'm sure look to him for for it, answers or responses for a son. I get, I, I'm not excusing it, but I'm saying it. it, it I, I feel like your yeah. parents have to play a role though, where they're you're, they're your support staff. You know, you go to them, and I'm sure Christian gives them the, the raw goods. Like, oh, I'm so frustrated. I, I, you know, he never talked to me. The coach doesn't talk to me or doesn't give me any attention or whatever. Right? That's and they absorb that. They can't go out there and then take that emotion. And then have it go out there publicly in a way that that is now I think it have a negative impact on Christian potentially. It's up to it's up to Tuchel to decide how he wants to absorb this happening. But but now Heath, I want you to confirm this for me because one time I heard from a pretty pretty good source that when Michael Bradley was at Bruce Munch and Gladbach and wasn't playing, Bob Bradley called the coach to to like basically like why aren't you playing my son? Can you can you did you ever hear that? I did. At that point, I, I, the Bruce Munch and Gladbach coach was like. Yo, I'm not. I'm not gonna play him ever again. I'm like, this is like, are you gonna have your dad call me? I don't know if it was Gladbach or Heronvine or uh, which, which club it was at, but I remember. I, I do remember hearing that. I never. I could obviously never confirm. confirm no, that I can't either. That's why I was asking from, you from the source. But shit, dude, I wish my, my parents would have called up Hans Rostock <laughs> and been like, "Hey, you got my son living in former East Germany in this small little town. He's not happy. He's playing video games all afternoon." Like maybe you can give him a run of games, you know. Uh, you know what I mean? Because he's bothering us all the time. He keeps asking us to send calling cards, uh, you know, for sure. But yeah, I mean, I could, oh, I, I, I could, I could, I could see that. Maybe. Parents are funny, but that's another. Even though Bob was a coach, he he still had an emotional out outburst that impacted potentially negatively impacted Michael and. And in some ways, you want your kids to stand on their own and have to deal with that adversity. And I know it's hard at times, even even when our kids are growing up, you want to kind of save them from from pain and suffering. But sometimes yes. that's going to help them grow and, and, yeah. and solve their own problems. So anyway, we don't need to, di to diverge this into a parenting podcast, but uh, that's all we got for today, everybody. Final thoughts. Charlie, I'm coming to you first here on this version of In Soccer We Trust. Final thoughts is Josh Sargent is on a tear and it's good to see him build his confidence again. And I, I fully expect for him to be in the, the September camp, as well as Brandon Vasquez, who continues to score. So, yes, Jesus Ferreira still has the key. And a lot of people aren't really settled that he's our starting striker at the moment. But I, I'm I'm curious to see if if that continues in the in these September friendlies, if Jesus Ferreira continues to play. And if and if he does well, then I think that answers the question for everybody. Now you're thinking about all right, if there's a substitution, uh, if he doesn't play perform well in the first game, well, who's 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 the next guy up? So I'm interested um, to continue to see the, the striker options, scoring goals, guys going out, moving down. So uh, that's that's my final thought. Yeah, I'm, I'm just excited that uh, we have some guys that are scoring goals, so we have something to talk about and get excited about in this position. Heath Pierce, final thoughts? Uh, no, I think, uh, Charlie, Charlie said it well there about the strikers. I think it's an exciting time for, for where our team is at still a, a few days left in the transfer window that could have some impact, including Jedi, which we could talk about on the, on the next show, uh, with, uh, Levin Kurzawa potentially going into Fulham mm -hmm. and challenging for that spot. But, uh, overall, I like where we're trending in terms of the depth, the, the, the quality of the players that we have heading over the next couple of months. It seems like a, it's a positive outlook, but, you know, it's a day, day by day when it comes to our national team players.
No, good shouts from both of you guys. My final thoughts are I'm a little bit nervous now about the goalkeeper position. Zach Steffen tweaked his knee, didn't play this past weekend for Middlesbrough. They win without him. But at uh, least he didn't not start, which is what we all thought true. was happening. That's true. Um, that's true. And then Matt Turner still on the depth chart. Ramsdale made some big saves in this one. I don't think we're going to see Matt Turner playing for Arsenal for, for a while. Hopefully he gets his opportunity and does well with it. And then Ethan Horvath, uh, you know, with Luton Town. I don't know if he's completely crushing. I mean, he's, he's playing, which I think is better than the other two guys at the moment. But uh, They're down still, towards the bottom, but I like him starting and, and I, uh, Sean Johnson. Yeah, Sean Johnson. We got Gaga, of course. But, but yeah, I'm still um, getting a little bit nervous about that. No, I'm just throwing not, that out there. Gaga's nowhere near ready. So I know yeah. that, but I'm just yeah. saying, I know, I know, I know. And he's not going to be maybe 2026. We're talking more about Gaga Salonina in, in a much more meaningful way, but. All right, that's it. I'm calling it. And Soccer We Trust is over, everybody. Thank you for listening and watching. As always, we appreciate your support on all the different platforms. And we will see you guys later in this week. We have a special guest plan, but we're going to tease it. So you have to wait and come back to find out. So on behalf of Dez, producer Dez, producer Alex, Charlie Chuck Wagon, Davies, Hollywood Heath Pierce, I'm Jimmy, trash can, cream cheese, Conrad, saying thank you for listening and watching. We'll see you next time. Later.